Okay, so deferred lighting. Here we are in a random system uh, somewhere in Federation space, and there is, quite frankly, some uh, dodgy parking going on. So if we zoom in, there's our Galaxy class, and we can see. Yeah, that's a little bit close for comfort, I would say. But just for the sake of this demonstration, we'll allow it because it's going to allow us to see how deferred lighting actually works. So, uh, what have we got? Well, at the moment, I've disabled deferred lighting. Um, and if I just zoom in, you can see the only part of the Defiant that's actually casting any light is here. Um, that's the impulse engine. And the reason why that's working is because we've baked it into the textures. Why have we baked it into the textures? Um, mainly because it's such a small area, we can manipulate it anyway, and it's not going to be a problem. I'll expand on that in a little bit. So, if I uh, enable my deferred lighting, you can see straight away uh, we get a new light source coming up. And um, that's casting light onto the Defiant itself, but it's also casting light onto the hull of uh, our Galaxy class here. We're also getting light casted off the uh, the plasma, sorry, the buzzards at the front there as well. So, four um, lights in total on the Defiant. And um, Basically, what this enables us to have, um, you'll have to excuse the old shadow system by the way, you're, you're going to find that we're, we're getting a lot of glitches because we've got two ships so close to one another. That won't be the case in the final game. Um, but yeah, there's two main advantages for this. first one is uh, we get a nice little specular highlight on uh, our ships. So for instance here, this is um, a specular highlight. If I move my camera around, you can see that actually changes um, based on the camera position. And that's entirely from the light node that we've got here. So that's something that we would not be able to do at all if uh, we were using burnt-in glows. There's a bigger advantage though. Um, if I just kind of go over to the Galaxy class for a second, um, what you can see is we've got a glow here coming off the deflector. I can't show you the whole ship. Oh yes I can, right okay. So we've got a couple of glows here. We've got a glow coming off the deflector, we've got a glow coming off the buzzard, um, but that's all mixed in with lights here. Um, and the problem with that is if we were to try to bake that into the texture, what you'd find is it was impossible to separate the glow from the window, so we'd have to disable the windows and the glow. However, by rendering it in real time, what it enables us to do is to actually uh, turn them off separately, although obviously at the moment we can't do that because we're just in the viewer, but we will be able to. Okay, so how does this all work? Well, I'm just going to quickly show you how this actually gets put together, um, and what we're going to use is um, model properties, if I drag that in. This is what we see uh, when we actually create a new light node. And I've got four nodes here. And what I can do is I can show light. And that shows me how big my light area is. Um, and it also allows me to change colours and, and all the rest of it. First things first, this isn't really blue enough for the kind of blue that we're seeing on the engine. It looks a little bit weird. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase uh, the, the blue saturation there. And I'm going to decrease the green and I'm going to decrease the red. And now we've got a much more vivid blue. Very quick to do, we can change all of that dynamically in game. Okay, what else can we change? Well, intensity. I can bring it down so it's barely visible at all, or I can go absolutely crazy uh, and I can have a, a very, very vivid bright light. The actual size of the light though hasn't changed at all if you notice, it's just that it's far more intense put that back to one for a second. Okay. I can also move the light around. So if I wanted to, let's say, move it um, back a little bit, then I could uh, increase this value here. Uh, and when we put this into the full engine, you can see that you can actually see the light source now. When we put this into the full engine, you'll be able to use a widget to do this. You won't have to type it all in numerically. Okay. And the final thing uh, is the radius, the size of it. Um, but I can make this much, much bigger. So that's 60. And you can see now that it's casting, still casting on the uh, Galaxy hull and it's casting on the um, Defiant hull as well. I can make it bigger still. There's really no limit to what I, what I can do. So if I've got a huge ship, it's not going to be a problem. It's not that I can only use it on a small area. And you can see the effect that that has. It also affects the normal maps and looks quite nice. So um, the only thing to say which is really left to do uh, aside from being able to use widgets which we were talking about a second ago the other thing is um, shadows and uh, I'm sure there's going to be a couple of comments on YouTube if I don't say this uh, but basically you can see that we've got no shadows enabled at all at the moment and that's something that we will be working on the disclaimer on that is that 
shadows are always expensive so we're not going to be able to have shadows for absolutely everything um, and the less shadows we use the more light sources we can have but at the same time um, we should be able to kind of handle you know how far away we can see shadows and how intense a light source needs to be before we can see shadows and using all of that we should be able to get a quite nice effect on the shadows as well uh, and I'm just going to bring that back down before it looks too ridiculous <laughs> okay so any questions um, feel free to post them onto the uh, comments underneath this video and uh, I'll try to answer the best I can.